I had just got back from a wonderful three-week road trip that took me almost as far north as Fargo, North Dakota, down to Detroit for a couple of wonderful days at the Henry Ford Museum, which I highly recommend, Montreal, Vermont, New York State, and finally home. And you know what? We have a beautiful country. Well, so do the Canadians. And they're filled with wonderful people. The national headlines would shout, we're a divided nation. MAGA Republicans demanding concessions from AOC Democrats and vice versa. The mouthpieces of political movements would have us believe that we are really all pissed off at each other. And they get lots of help from the media. But in the past three weeks, I've sat in numerous small cafes that sit miles off of any interstate, a standard when we road trip, no chain restaurants, order the apple pie and listen to the local chatter. I'm convinced the mouthpieces and the media do not speak for 90% of the people that make up the United States. Is everybody as satisfied as they could be? I don't believe so. For the most part, I see them going with the flow. Do their politicians actually speak for them? I don't believe that either. I believe the composite U.S. citizen is calmer, more rational, and not prone to telling his neighbor how he's supposed to think and what's right and wrong for him and how to live his life. In my coaching, we frequently work on subtle ways to influence those around us. It's called leadership. And directly telling someone what they're supposed to change is statistically not very successful. When somebody tells you to do this in a very authoritarian way, what's your normal response? It's defensive. We developed a healthy application of this as teenagers, right? And we still have it. What follows defensive? Offensive. And so we look on any given day like we're standing on opposite sides of the Mason-Dixon line yelling at each other, and I don't think a majority of us are actually doing that. When you push me, I will naturally push back. That's how it starts. Statements that tell me how to think, act, vote, etc. have a high likelihood of being met by resistance. Certainly, some of us are getting sucked in, but for the most part, I see many prioritizing more productive lines of thought and conversation except while watching some news broadcast or listening to some politician berate another, possibly my current choice, I'm discovering the average American has more important things to do. To put food on his table, relate to his family, recreate enough to stay sane in this insanity. Please don't get sucked in. I see no truth out there. The messages are designed to push until you push back. I urge you to stay above all that. Take in the data and make productive decisions for yourself. It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.